All right. Okay, guys, so I'm Crystal. For those of you who are watching later, and if you are not in Crystal Clear Oilers on Facebook, that's where we run our VIP class where you guys can learn more and more about the oils that you already have and hopefully help to guide you to just what we're about to talk about, healthy habits, using those oils and helping you live a really nice, strong life. Uh, part of what I love is just encouraging and guiding people to just kind of take one more step towards a healthy lifestyle. So let's just say you are already drinking plenty of water, maybe the next step is getting moving, right? And oils are a great supplement in every area of our life, and so I feel like it's very intuitive and as you start to use them, they start to integrate in our lives very easily. So we're gonna talk about healthy habits, and then we'll talk about how to incorporate them in there or how do we establish a healthy, oil habit in conjunction with natural habits as well. Uh, there are some really, really basic fundamentals. And I think I could break it down into like three main things, like making sure you're hydrated, making sure you're moving and making sure you're oiled, right? Like that's the most simple form of, okay, healthy habits, right? And in the very beginning, habits can become tedious. And sometimes we try to tackle way too many at once. And I think that's the, the number one place I see people falter or, or fail a little bit is that they try to do too many at once. And I actually had a teacher a while back with the kids and she put it in such a, a wonderful way. Uh, especially when think about training kids, you don't throw a whole list of chores at them or a whole list of things that they need to do or responsibilities. You add one thing at a time and you work on it until they have it. And that is going to be the exact way that we will, we will find success in our own lives. Sometimes we feel like maybe we're in a rush to get it done. Maybe we want to get those habits in place. And in that rush, we, we give up because it becomes overwhelming. So what I want to establish is picking one to two things and getting good at it and then deciding that we're going to add one or two more things. Okay. Uh, and then, I, I do believe that these can be very personalized. So every person's priorities are going to be slightly different, just like our cells are different. Just like the oils we choose are going to be different. They're going to be slightly different. So let me give you a couple tiny things, like six little steps, if you wanna take notes, feel free, that um, have helped me. And then within these steps, we can then establish more specific habits. So number one, establishing a morning routine and uh, knowing your schedule throughout the day. This is kind of, if you, you can say it in this way, being a master or being the boss of your calendar, instead of allowing your calendar to be your boss, you know, instead of like fluttering around and not knowing what you're going to do with your day, you really have a structured time of when you're going to do certain things. So for me, I learned a long time ago, maybe some of you guys know this person, but fly lady. Uh, Fly Lady, I don't do all of her components, but she's an online entity. Before we even knew about social media, she was doing emails like, like a pro, right? And she talked very much about establishing a morning routine. You get up, you, well, you could shower, but you get dressed all the way to the feet. Like you make sure you have shoes that are tie on so you don't slip them off, right? And you make your bed. That's like your early morning routine. And then you go out before you leave your door, everything is ready before the chaos hits you. That resonated with me. Uh, it made a huge impact in how I live my life. And so just establishing that morning routine. I'm gonna give you a couple tips on what I do, and I actually did it in my story today, so maybe you know you saw that. But the first thing I do is I get up, I take some peppermint, put it on the roof of my mouth, I breathe it in, and I get wide awake. Whether I take a shower in the morning or the night changes depending on my schedule, so I won't go into when I do that. But definitely that oil, I breathe that in, and, what, and I might put frankincense or balance on my forehead and the neck and then breathe that in. So whatever my oils spe specifically are, you can use whatever you want. Then I get my hot tea started and I get my four to eight ounces of warm, just tap water, nothing special, not heating it up, lemon water. Four drops of lemon, about four to eight ounces of, of water, and I just chug it down. It helps flush whatever my body was dealing with overnight 
and gets all the junk out. And so that's just like my morning reset, my morning flush. Then I get my vitamins out, I get them ready, and I don't take them immediately in the morning. Some people really like to do that, but I don't eat right in the morning. I actually, part of my routine is waiting as long as I can, almost till lunchtime to eat, and that's something called intermittent fasting, which we can go into a whole nother day. But I basically smell my oils, get my diffusers running, get my hot tea going, do my devotion, I have my vitamins set out in either a shot glass or in the lids, however I like to do it. And quite honestly, during cleanses and things like that, all of my vitamins are like this. I actually have two full seven day uh, dispensers and I put all my supplements in there or I will forget them. So I like, it's kind, kind of like forcing the habit for, so to speak, because if we don't, uh, the motivation to do some things will wear off very quickly and we need that habit to be in place or we won't keep doing it, right? So that's number one, establish your morning routine. Then the next thing would be stay focused and keep to your daily to-do list, so, but keep it very small. Uh, again, this is where we go and we think we're gonna do a bunch of things. And I wanna hear from some of you, how many of you have a list and then you go into the laundry room to put your one load of laundry in and then you see something else in there that you need to do so you start doing that and then you go in another the kitchen and you're supposed to be putting the dishes away and then you all of a sudden see a counter needs to be wiped off how many of you do that like a, you were <laughs> i can see you shaking your heads that is actually we try to multitask it's not good to multitask it's better to focus, but that takes a lot of training. And so focusing and sticking only to your list. And as a matter of fact, if you have your list handy, when, let me invite some more people. When you see yourself do, wanting to do those things, quickly jot it on your list so that you can um, absolutely get back to it because it, clearly it was important to you but it's not on your to-do list that day, okay? So that's just staying focused and keeping that list small so that it's attainable because checking off lists feels really good. The third thing is get outside of your comfort zone because you will, you will really find growth when you're not comfortable. When we're comfortable, we don't grow as a human being. I found when I first started this company, whether you guys are doing a business or just living your lifestyle, for me, let me give you an outside of doTERRA example. I did not grow up in a church. I heard about Jesus and, and, and God and stuff, but it wasn't something that was super important in our family. And later in life, it became important to me. And then when we started going to the church, they said, well, we need volunteers for Sunday school. And I was like, that's never going to happen because I never even read the Bible, right? So like, I'm like, I don't even know these stories that you're talking about, Jonah and whatnot. I had no idea, right? Well, I felt a really strong conviction when uh, one of them said that you, when you're doing it, when you're serving like that, you're not doing it to your be the best of your ability. You're doing it and then the Lord will give you what you need. And so I, Neil and I both felt that calling and we decided, okay, well, we'll volunteer and do it. They're giving us a book you know, we'll, we'll be prayerful and try. Well, during that year that we served and taught the little children, we learned so much about the Bible, about our own faith, about growing spiritually, about being committed to something and about serving others, whether you were going to get something out of it or not, that it will, but it was extremely uncomfortable. Hopefully you got that part of it. It was not something I ever wanted to do. And it wasn't something that I ever expected to volunteer to do, but I got put in that position and we ended up growing exponentially when we were outside of our comfort zone. And the same thing goes with everything in your life. So get out of that comfort zone Four, move your body. I cannot express this enough. My joke and I tease, but we're going to show you the 30 day habit thing. When I talk to someone, I've talked to people who have literally not drank water in the last six or seven years of their life. I'm not kidding. Like not one drop, like either juice is something they drink and that's all they drink. I'm up to a gallon of water a day. Yay. That's exciting. Angel. that is such a huge yeah. commitment. That's a huge change, a huge habit that will change everything. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so the digestion, yeah. How, how did it affect you? Changing it. How did it affect me? Um, well, one, I'm not hungry as much because um, it fills you up, but my skin feels more hydrated. Um, I feel a little more rested. Um, I've been going through a lot. It's been a very stressful couple of weeks. Um, but I, I've made sure I've stayed hydrated because depression and, you know, that, that'll wipe you out and dehydrate you really fast. Yeah. I that. Thank you for sharing that because you're right. It, most things, most health concerns establish from dehydration and lack of sleep. You can get tons of lack of sleep because you're dehydrated, but it's all stemmed together. And one, if we've been to symphony of cell training, a couple of our team members and myself, you can't move well if you're dehydrated, you feel sluggish if you're dehydrated, your bowels don't move if you're dehydrated, your body cells are kind of atrophied if you are dehydrated, your brain can't function right if you're dehydrated, you can get urinary tract infections if you're dehydrated. There's so many things, right? Well, if we fuel is- our body with hydration, high quality filtered water and good foods, we're going to be able to do so much more for our body, right? That's where lifelong vitality comes in. And that's why that's a good part of a healthy foundation. But we um, went to that symphony. Of so with my lupus, with my lupus that drinking the water has helped the joints um, not stiffen so much and I'm able to move more. Um, so I have noticed a, a tremendous difference with the water intake. I um, love it. And I think the, the number I one, I my bathroom quite more often. I was going to say that exact thing because that's the one complaint I get is, Oh my gosh, I have to go to the bathroom all the time. I'm like, actually that's normal. <laughs> Like some people will go number one and number two and they're like, I go all the time. I'm like, yeah, girl. Yeah. Get it out. Get it out. You don't want that in there. You think of food sitting on the counter and you just let it sit there. Right. After one day you might like temp, like temp, be tempted to eat it. Right. But the next day there's no way you're going to eat that food. Right. Well, that's what's happening to our gut. If it's just sitting there, if we don't have water to flush it through. i have people who are having diarrhea but they're constipated, right? And it's because they're blocked and only the fluids and only the soft parts can go through and that's not okay. Our body's just, it's just rotting in there. So water, 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 water. And typically eight ounces per, um, how do they say? Per pound, is that right? I think so. Yes. Uh, eight ounces per pound. So it's for, So for me, it's not much. It sounds like a lot. Okay. Oh no, it's half your body weight. So that's, that's an easier way to put it. Okay. Half your body weight. That's only for me, two of these guys, two, two to three of these and you're good. And so I always chug one in the morning because then at least I, I'm like, okay, I'm halfway there. Right. Because I just forget, I forget to drink. I get so busy. How did the first time I know my lips will start getting dry. Then I know I'm dehydrated. Do you guys get that too? I get, I get cramps in my muscles. Cramps in your muscles. Absolutely. I've done that in the middle of the night. Hey, great. Okay. So, um, okay. So we're talking about the different steps. We're going through six steps and we're on moving your body, getting, you know, fueling it with great, uh, food and great liquids, good, good water. Uh, citrus in your water is huge. So get a lot of that in there. I do four, one to two ounces two drops per four ounces. I like it pretty flavorful. So I don't, I think, I don't think it really matters. You're not going to have too much. Um, you would pay attention to your body because I know some people, if they're having edema or a little bit of swelling or fluid retention, they're going to add more. And if someone is going to the bathroom too much and it's really bothering them, then they might go like pull back on the citrus, but healthy food too, because what you put in your body matters. All right. And moving. So here's my tip for the 30 day uh, checklist, right? If someone's really not moving or they've never drank water, I'm just like, okay, one glass of water or, cause that's a mini goal, right? One glass of water a day and put on one song, your favorite song and get up and move. And that's it. It might be four minutes, but sometimes we have to start with that tiny bit, but we can always graduate to a little bit more like 30 day burpee challenges, right? I know you guys will look at me funny. 
Okay, number five, create a space where you can reflect on the positive. 80% of the thoughts that come in our mind will be negative. That's just proven research. Studies have shown that 80% that comes out into our minds is going to be negative. If we can pump in the positive, whether you do Deb Erickson mentor training, if you need to know more about that, ask me because it's free for you guys. Maybe you uh, just listen to positive things on YouTube or maybe, maybe you have your daily devotions that you love and it, or your worship, worship music that really pumps into your mind positivity. Uh, a, a really great positive book that really gets you going. Like um, there's lots of different books that we could recommend when it comes to just personal growth in general and helping you keep your mind right. Those things are really important to pump in the positive, but also having a space. So whether it's five minutes in the morning or maybe five minutes at lunch or five minutes at night where you sit alone and allow your mind to be quiet. That's not easy. That actually takes a lot of effort. My, I can even remember the day that I had a thought that I stopped and was able to stop my reaction because I've always been an impulsive person. I was always a person that whatever came into my mind came right out my mouth. Like I'm, I was super fast paced. This right here never slowed down my whatever is almost like you, I couldn't even hear myself think over my thoughts, if that makes sense. That's kind of how my mind always was. And so it took practice uh, and effort to come to a more calm state in my mind so you can control those thoughts and help redirect them to be more positive. But it takes effort to, to create that white space to be able to do that. The last step is to go to bed early and wake up early. Now, same time is really actually better. So if you find the time that works for you, creating that habit, like for me, I cannot possibly sleep past 6.30. My, my little brain clock goes ping. Doesn't matter if there's an alarm or not, it's up. Um, I have to put in effort or go to bed an hour early to get up at 5.30, and sometimes I do, but with kids home and everything crazy, I'm just sticking to the 6.30 right now. And it feels good, but I also go to bed at the same time. I have some of you guys have phones that will allow this. And I'm going to show you really quickly because you might be able to do this on your phone. But if you have a clock on your phone and then you go to, how many of you have this, this um, option where it says bedtime? Do you guys have that option on your phone? You have it, right, Angela? Yeah. You can put it there and you can say, okay, well, how many hours do I need, right? For me, seven hours, I feel great, right? Eight hours, I feel too tired. Like, I don't know why. I just do. But you can put it in and you say, I need to get this many and I need to get up at this time. It'll tell you what time to go to bed. I love it because I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Um, I would have to calculate all the numbers, right? Well, I don't have to do that. I see a baby. Hi. <laughs> So anyways, let me make sure. Okay. Uh, so I feel like that option is super good because then it makes it a little ring and it says, I have it telling me like a lullaby. Perfect, Angela. Perfect. Perfect. Get yourself your little, um, I, and I'm going to tell you something weird about me. Don't tell anybody. I cannot put it at a normal time. Like it can't be 11 o'clock. It has to be like 11.02. Don't ask. I have no idea why. Like you're like, oh, that's awful. <laughs> Griffin, are you like, that's not going to happen. Neil too. Neil has to have it. Like, yeah, I'm no. I'm, I'm increments of 15 for time, but like okay. usually it's increments of five for everything, like including the volume on the TV. Like I can't, I can't be. No. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. I think there's a condition because Neil is the same way. And, and I'm just like, no. It has to be like 637. And he's like, what? <laughs> he was like, I don't think so. Believe Stop. me, that's, that's something we'll hear. <laughs> I don't know. It's not that important, right? It's as long as you're not like trying to hang out with me and do it, right? <laughs> you can pick your own time, whatever suits you. 
All right, so uh, those are my six main things. I'll go through them super fast. Establishing a morning routine, very important. Schedule out your time during the day because sometimes you have so many things you feel like you can't get it all done, but the reality is we have a lot of time, but a lot of it we waste on other things. So if we schedule out what we're gonna do in 15 minute chunks, there you go, Griffin. 15 minute chunks, then you'll be able to get those things done because it doesn't really take a lot of time when you're focused. And the next is stay focused. So make your to do lists very short so that they're doable. If you find something else to do in the room where you're, you're supposed to be folding your laundry, mark it on the list for the next day. Uh, there's always going to be more things to do. Remember that. The third thing is to get outside of your comfort zone because that's where growth happens. Fourth, move your body. Fuel it with a lot of water and a good food, right? Five, create that white space. Create a space where you can reflect on the positive things. Make a bullet journal. I'm trying to do that right now. And next is go to bed early or wake up at the same time each day. So that those are healthy, healthy habits, okay? Now, let's quickly show you this habit checklist. And then we will uh, be done. How many of you have seen this? You can I've never seen it, but I totally don't understand it. You don't understand it. Okay, I'm going to explain it right now because this is a tool that will help you. And if you're trying to help anyone else, it is such a fantastic tool. And there is a counter piece. There's another piece to this that will actually, it shows you in words. So, cause some people like a checklist, some people like the words to tell you exactly what to do. And it does, there is a piece that tells you exactly what to do. But for this, it tells you over here, this is the healthy habits kit. Okay, FYI, it was made for the daily healthy habits kit. We can buy that monthly if we need to. We can, it's an enrollment package. You do not have to use these specific oils. So if you are like, you know what, lavender's not my oil. I love serenity. You'll cross that out, write serenity there, okay? Maybe you don't have frankincense yet, but you absolutely love lavender. You can put, cross that out, use your lavender there. Use the oils that you have, but the idea is this 30 days. It is, have we taken our vitamins on day one? Check right? So what I, my challenge to people typically is if you fill this out and send me back a picture after 30 days, two things have happened. One, you've created a healthy foundation with the, your healthy habits. And two, I'm going to send you a prize. And it's not ever something giant. It's mostly about loving them. So it might be a sticker or it might be uh, your rock, you rock card, or it might be a free roller, whatever it is. It's just incentivizing because we want people not to have dusty bottles, but we want them to love their oils. Like you guys are on here. We want you to love your oils. We want we to, you to use the oils because if you don't open the bottles, they don't work. That I can promise. Now, on here, it has the main supplements. It's going to have lifelong vitality pack. It also has probiotics and terrazyme. Every single person needs to be on those. If you are 29 or older, your body has stopped producing digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes help our body um, produce and store calcium to help our bones be stronger helps to break down calcium deposits. It also helps digestive tracts. So it's gonna help um, people with skin rashes and joint pain and things like that because if our body can't digest the nutrients, we can't get what we need and then our body's overloaded with the stuff we don't want. That's where Terrazyme comes in. Then probiotics, every person needs probiotics because of a healthy gut, that's 80% of our immunity and 80% of Everything is going on in our body, right? It stems from our gut. So if our gut's not happy, the rest of our body is going to have issues. So keeping the gut healthy is very, very crucial. Uh, Microplex VMZ is your extra vitamins and minerals. Alpha CRS Plus is your, it's just part of that three bottles up at the top. So Alpha CRS Plus is the anti-inflammatory. So it helps kick out the bad cells, the old cells, and helps your cells proliferate healthy. Uh, X, or it's called Zomega. I always say X Omega. It's Z Omega and it's just omegas three, six, and nine. That's your fish oils. But it has nine essential oils that are going to be healthy for our joints, for our brain function, uh, getting our bodies moving, and getting our blood flowing. Balance lavender, lemon, frankincense, on guard. 
These may be oils you use rarely, but they should be oils you use every day. That is why they are in this kit. They're in this kit because frankincense, number one oil for anti-inflammatory, one drop under the tongue, Neil takes four, so work with your body. Like if you still have achiness, bump it up. He, I thought that the taste of that frankincense was so foul when I first tasted it, but now I can rub it around in my mouth and it doesn't bother me at all. As a matter of fact, even Max, he had an aptus ulcer. Melaleuca will kind of sting, but it will numb it, but frankincense is great for oral mucosa, so I just rubbed a little bit up in his gum. He never complained again about the aptus ulcer, and he's so used to the taste of frankincense now that it didn't matter. Um, on guard, oh, frankincense also good for skin, okay? Wrinkle skin scars. Lavender, Swiss Army knife, burns, uh, stress, sleep. Combine the frankincense and lavender for on the bottom of your toes. You can see that there's a lot of different combinations, right? There's not peppermint in here, but if someone's struggling with allergies, there's lemon and lavender. Lemon's going to flush out toxins and lavender is going to soothe the airways and help with anti-itching and antihistamine type stuff. So I always have people gargle with those if they have that. And if they don't, just breathe in the lavender, put it in the diffuser. But any combination of those would be great in a diffuser and just breathing it in is still a healthy habit. So we're checking off which oils we used. Maybe you didn't use them all that day, but hopefully you used some. And if you used one oil, it's still a healthy habit, okay? And so they may not, they may stop at deep blue rub and they might not have the vitamin pack yet, but they can still create a healthy habit with On Guard. They can still create a healthy habit with lemon, lavender, and peppermint. The idea is helping incorporate what they're already doing. Maybe they're moving, maybe they're trying to exercise and they need deep blue rub and frankincense, right? So do you understand the concept? It's just helping someone create healthy habits. So it doesn't mean every single box has to be checked. It means have you looked at your oil protocol today? Okay, have you opened your oils today? So are you gonna send that link? You want this um, checklist? Yes, but well, the checklist, yeah. the tracker thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in the group, and I'll tag you guys. Okay. I we've used this lots of times, but I'll absolutely get get it to you. All right. So, does anyone want to share? I'm going to stop sharing. Does anyone want to share? I'm going to stop recording too. Sorry, guys.